key provision of the Federal Clean Water Act limits the ability of landowners to fill in marshes, bogs, and other wetlands in preparation for development. The scope or reach of this long controversial land use limit affecting millions of acres is once again before the Supreme Court. My name is Eric Freifogel. I'm a professor at Illinois College of Law with expertise in environmental and property law, and I'm going to break down the case of Sackett versus Environmental Protection Agency. The central issue in this case is how close wetlands need to be to a river or lake to enjoy protection under the Clean Water Act. Conservative groups have challenged the EPA's under implementing regulations as going too far as invasions of private property rights and federal overreach. Environmentalists have seen them instead as essential to slow the ecological decline of waterways and wildlife habitats. There's no dispute some wetlands are protected by the Clean Water Act. But the landowners bringing the case argue the statute only covers wetlands with a continuous surface connection to a river or lake. Wetlands further away, those separated from any body of water, should be exempt. The Supreme Court's three prior attempts to resolve the dispute have failed to provide clear guidance. Prior to arguments, the conservative majority was expected to side with the plaintiff landowners and to rule that wetlands were only protected if visibly connected to a river or lake. At arguments, however, multiple justices, conservative and liberal, challenged this interpretation of the statute and seemed anxious to find a more protective interpretation that was also easier to apply than current law. The majority might well come up with a new reading of the key provision, one that does not require an unbroken water connection between wetlands and a river or lake, but nevertheless limits the act's coverage to wetlands that are geographically nearby. The court's decision in Sackett is expected in 2023.